Hi AstroAddicts, in this video I want to talk about a very important subject that enables us astrophotographers to do our job properly. Filters. What they are, why they are used and how we can use them to make better images of deep space. My name is Tim and welcome back to AstroAddict. This video will be split in two parts. What filters are and why they are used goes hand in hand, but how to actually apply them to the telescope is a story on its own, which will be its own video. Please note that this small introduction is only about photographic use of filters, not about any visual applications. A filter is basically a piece of glass placed in front of our camera's sensor. In daytime photography, filters like these are commonly used to create creative effects, but sadly astrophotographers are greatly dependent on them. To understand what a filter will do to your image, we have to get a bit sciency. The light our telescopes collect is made out of many different frequencies or wavelengths. The wavelength of visible light determines its color. When you go online shopping for filters, you will most likely see a graph like this. It will tell you what the filter does. On the bottom we have the wavelength of visible light and on the left the transmission of the glass. In this case, light with a wavelength of 672 nanometers will pass through the filter and can be detected on our sensor. Almost everything else will be blocked. 672 nanometers is orange-red and your image will look like that, if you have a color camera, that is. Filters will block or reduce specific parts of the visible spectrum or the infrared. Most of the time we use them to reduce the negative impact of light pollution or moon glow or to create creative effects that will enhance the image. We now know how to read the spectral chart of a filter. And to explain the many different types of filters there are, I will often go back to those. In general, filters can be divided into two main groups, broadband and narrowband. When we say band, we actually mean the width of the spectral hump. First example. Broad peaks, narrow peaks. A broad band filter tries to pass most of the visible light, reducing only some parts, more or less, of it. Those filters are typically used to reduce light pollution or moon glow. Some of them are stronger, others weaker, which means they block more or less of the unwanted light. Consider this when purchasing your first filter. If you live in a lightly light polluted area, a weak filter will do, but if you live in bottle 5, 6 and up, you almost can't get around a strong filter. But if stronger filters are better, why won't we use a strong filter for every situation? The sad truth, the stronger the filter is, the more unwanted light it blocks, but it also cuts into the image. A strong filter will also reduce the color in your stars, and the entire dynamics of the image will diminish. That is why we can choose them based on our area of living. Popular examples are the Optolon L Pro, Astronomic UHC and CLS. A narrowband filter on the other hand blocks out almost everything. Their purpose is to enhance just one wavelength, one at a time, to enhance certain parts of the image. The most popular, H-alpha, red, sulfur 2, orange red and oxygen 3, blue. Taking an image through such a filter will leave you with the, in this case, very red image, which should be reduced to black and white to fully appreciate it. But if you combine data from several types of these filters, you can create amazing things. You can cut through the entirety of light pollution and moon glow to focus your attention to very specific targets in the sky. Nebulae. Most of those are made out of hydrogen, so they glow in a pleasant red H-alpha tone. Combining that with O3 and maybe S2, you will be able to create amazing composite images from the heaviest of light pollution. Popular brands in this range are Astronomic, Beta and Chroma. Yes, narrowband filters are amazing, but they come with a big price. Literally. Most of them are very expensive and you have to put so much more work and time into each image. Exposures will need to be longer, you will need to take more of them and post-processing can be pretty tiring. Popular combinations for narrowband composites are HOO, where the RGB channels have been replaced with H-alpha, O3 and O3, and SHO, also called the Hubble palette, 
where RGB has been replaced with sulfur, hydrogen and oxygen. It is also a common practice to enhance basic RGB images with narrowband data. For example, HARGB, where HA and R have been fused together. Or, just very simply, HAGB. And the approach to those images? Shoot broadband RGB data around near moon when there's no moonlight in the sky. And shoot your narrowband, which blocks moonlight when it's around its full face. If you use a broadband filter on a moonlit night, it will be very hard, I tried. But using a narrowband filter on a no moon night, you will miss out on so many star colors, which are so important to create an appealing image. Since narrowband filters only pass one wavelength, it makes sense to use them with a narrowband camera. It is definitely possible to use them with color cameras, but that's so much more work for the same result. Does that mean you have to get a monochrome camera if you want to work with narrowband filters? No. Between broadband and narrowband, there exists a special type of filter, which combines the best of both worlds. Those filters are called multi-narrowband filters, and they do just that. Pass narrow wavelengths of light, but two or three or four of them, multiple of them. This means that you can use a color camera and create a narrowband, colorful result in just one night. That is why they are sometimes also called one-shot color filters. Popular examples are the Eidos Nebula Booster series, Optolong L Extreme and L Enhance, and the Radiant Astro Triad Ultra. To decide which filter is best for you is a difficult task. My recommendation? Take a look at others similar to you which filters they use and how their images are turning out. Are you more into traveling or do you want to stay in your backyard? Do you want to get creative and invest in this hobby or do you want to make quick sweeps outside every now and again? All of this can be considered when choosing your first filter. And by using that, I will guarantee you, it will be an eye-opening adventure. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, consider subscribing to the channel to get more amazing astronomy and astrophotography insights. I will also leave all the links to filters mentioned down in the description. Please note that those are affiliate links, so if you purchase through the link in the description, I will get a small portion of the price. And as for me, my name is Tim, I'm an astro addict, I wish you clear skies, and may the night be with us.